Hello everyone, my name is Stanley St. Rose and today we're going to be talking about Holes written by Louis Satcher. Now, before I go into summary analysis of this work, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment so that the channel can continue to grow. Now, Holes uh, by Louis Satcher is a very interesting book. Um, it all starts with Stanley Yelnats's great-great-grandfather um, and basically what happens is that, you know, he likes his girl and he has no money. Uh, and in order to marry this girl, he has to present, um, like a gift. It kind of feels like a dowry. Um, but they don't, they don't call it, it that, um, to the father of the girl. Um, because, you know, he has no money. He has no prospects. Um, and so he, he, he needs something to marry this girl, but he doesn't have anything. So he goes to this, to this Madame Zeroni and Madame Zeroni is pretty much, um, I guess you can define her as some type of witch doctor, shaman, spiritual, um, um, practicer. Um, and they make this deal where, um, she gives him a small pig. And he has to carry the small pig to the top of the mountain and sing this lullaby to the pig. And the more he does this, the more the pig will grow. And the other condition of this deal is that once, you know, he presents the pig to the father, he gets married to the girl. Um, he's going to have to come back and carry um, Madame Zeroni to the top of the mountain and sing the lullaby to her so that she can grow and gain strength. Just like the pig grew and, and gained strength. Um, so pretty much what happens is, um, uh, the grandfather, you know, he gets into this competition with this other guy. He realizes that the girl's not that bright and Madame Zeroni told him that the girl wasn't that bright and that she's pretty, but you know, she's not really going to help him build his family or build his house or, or be there for him in tough times because she's just pretty and, 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 you know, beauty is something that's, that's, that doesn't last forever. It fades over time. And, and at some point everybody gets old, um, men, women, everybody, you know, you're, you're, you're young for a time and then everybody gets old and gray. So she, Madame Zeroni was telling Stanley, like Stanley's like great grandfather that, you know, you, you, you gotta be smart about this and pick someone who's going to help you that has some other type of value to you. Uh, but he doesn't listen. He well, he does listen ultimately because he does realize that it's just not gonna be good for him. Um, and he actually just gives the family the pig and just moves to America basically. Um, but he forgot to carry Madame Zeroni to the top of the mountain, and he gets cursed. Um, and and yeah, he gets cursed, and um, the whole family gets cursed for several generations. Um, Madame Zeroni pretty much, you can, we can assume that she dies. Um, yeah, she just, she just dies. Um, I mean, she had a son that made it over to America as well. Um, and, and they're coming from Lafia. So, um, both families, Madame Zeroni's family line and, and Stanley Yilnats's family line, they both make it to America. Um, and the story kind of like focuses on America and then later focuses in, in Texas, um, Stanley's family, several generations go by, very, very poor family, you know, they, they have like inventors and all these wonderful people, but because they're cursed, whatever they try to do, whatever they try to be successful in, uh, they, they fail at it. So, um, in the, in the present within this book, uh, we meet Stanley Yelnats and he gets, um, blamed for stealing shoes that he didn't steal. Hector Zeroni stole the shoes and he gets sent to a juvenile camp for stealing the shoes. Um, and, and, and that's the, the story of the family at that point. Um, there's another, I mean, there's several like stories that make the story of holes. Um, because what, another story is we, we get the story of Sam and um, Kate Barlow kissing Kate, Kate Bar, Bar, ooh, kissing Kate Barlow. There you go. Uh, so you get that story of them and basically in the U.S., this is the time where, you know, black people and white people didn't mix. Um, um, Kate Barlow and Sam, her, her boyfriend who's black, you know, they get, you know, they get caught kissing each other and uh, the town just pretty much like green. 
Um, Green Lake pretty much rises up against them. Um, and um, they, they kill Sam. And Kate Barlow becomes this outlaw. And she starts stealing from everybody and pretty much killing all the men uh, that's done wrong to her or from for taking uh, her 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 love from her um in the ki the kissing kate barlow part the kissing part is you know she kisses all the men that all the men that she kills she kisses them on the cheek and leaves like this this you know this smooch print on their cheeks and and that's that's her her signature like you know when she's done killing and robbing that's like she signs it and be like this was my work um so Story goes on. Um, Green Lake pretty much dries up. It's this town in Texas. It dries up. It becomes desert. It becomes a juvenile camp uh, where the boys who get sent there, they just dig holes um, pretty much all day long. Um, and they think they're just digging holes as a punishment, but really they're looking for um, kissing Kate Barlow's treasure that she buried in near Green Lake. Um, and you know, basically the story goes on and, and um well what we do find out is that Kissing Kate Barlow stole from Stanley Ilnatz's um grandfather and uh she buried it near Green Lake and well St Stanley ends up finding it. Um I guess you can call it I guess it's it's this is where the story kinda gets interesting because like if they're truly cursed um how how does Stanley find the buried treasure when people have been looking at it for decades, right? Um, so that's that's an interesting part of uh, the book. I mean, you could also say that since Stanley Yelnats and Hector Zeroni met at the juvenile camp, um, the 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 curse was getting closer and closer to being broken because. Um, they were close together and, and, and then there were two family lines that were meeting again. Um, so the two family lines met in Lafia, uh, and then they end up meeting again in the United States, you know, you know, a, a very long time with, with a very long time in between. Yeah. So, um, the, the family, you know, Stanley Ilnats gets sent there. Hector Zeroni is in this juvenile camp. And Hector Zeroni, pretty much his story is that uh, he and his mother got split up. Uh, Hector Zeroni had to sleep in, in parks. And, and, you know, he was homeless for a very long time. He he was living on the streets and, and, and just doing anything he could to survive. He gets sent to this juvenile camp. They thought he couldn't read. They thought he was stupid. But, I mean, he's not stupid. He just never had a chance to go to school because he got split up from his mother. And, you know, he, you know, Hector Zeroni and his mother, they've been looking for each other for a very long time. Um, and, and this all gets revealed throughout the book. Um, at the camp, I mean, there's several interesting characters. A lot of interesting kids who've had rough lives, you know, bad parents, bad childhoods. They've they've gone down the wrong path. And an interesting thing that this book talks about is how you know a lot of these kids. It's not that they're bad. It's not that they're evil. It's that it's not that they they want to be bad kids or evil. It's just that life just gave them some really bad cards and. And it's made them jaded and jaded and cynical and, and, and rough. And, and they've done things that because the world, you know, pretty much gave them a really tough start. They had to become tough and they had to do things that are not good. Um, and and it's not that, you know, they, they all kind of like turn around at the end of the book and, and try to make better decisions going forward in their lives. Uh, but we, you can definitely see that these kids, they weren't born in the lap of luxury. They, they weren't born with the best conditions. They weren't, you know, they didn't have, they didn't start in a good place of life. So you can understand why, you know, and their 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 childhoods were horrible. So their teen years, uh, you know, were going we're not going in the right direction, but. By the end of this story, because of Stanley's story, because of Hector Zeroni's story, um, I mean, their 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 hearts of stone were soft and softened a little bit, and um, well, I guess you can say they they saw the light. 
Um, so the story goes on forward. Um, you know, we have this whole thing with the warden um, at the, at this camp. You know, she's looking for the treasure. Um, and you have other uh, um, really interesting camp counselors and how they're all not true camp counselors. And this camp is a really just a, 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 a whole, just like a, a smoke screen. It, they're all just literally, it's kind of like a camp of, of pirates. They're digging for gold because that's literally what it is. It's, it's set up as a juvenile camp, but it's really like it's a treasure hunt. Um, but nobody realizes until Stanley finds um, the treasure. So, yeah. Um, but Stanley ultimately does find the treasure. Him and Hector Zeroni become friends because, you know, Stanley was teaching Hector Zeroni how to read throughout the, you know, throughout the, the his time at the camp. Um, the, you know, by fate, you, you know, um, Stanley ends up carrying Hector Zeroni to the top of, 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 um, God's Thumb, though that's the name of the mountain um, that he carries Hector Zeroni to, and um, and yeah, yeah, um, carries him to to God's Thumb, and um, Hector Zeroni drinks from the mountain, and Stanley sings him the lullaby. It, it just happens. The only thing, like I do have the problem I have with this book is that. Um, the deal made with Madame Zeroni and um, Stanley's great great grandfather was in Lafia, so it was a mountain that they climbed in Lafia. So, I mean, mountains don't grow legs and move. So, God's thumb in 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 Texas in the book is not the same mountain that was in Lafia. So, I guess it could be any mountain with water on top of it. So that that's a little bit of like a um a, a problem. I I guess it's not a problem. But let's just overlook it. But for me, I feel like it had to be the same type of mountain climbed and in, in the same place in the same order for the curse to be broken, but I guess fate had other plans but the curse is broken stanley gets the treasure hector zeroni with his portion of the money that stanley gives to him um you know he hires a private investigator he finds his mom they buy you know matching houses close to each other you know houses close to each other and you know you know they 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 get they're not like rich like billionaire rich but I guess at the time that this book was published or the movie was 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 shot, the the amount of money that they got was was a lot of money. So they they were way better off than than they were. Um, so you know that's really good. And and you know Hector Zeroni and Stanley Yilnats they they go back to school and and try to live better lives. Um. And that's pretty much how the story ends. Like all the boys, they they leave the camp. The camp gets turned into this girls' camp, and the rain starts falling, and it's no longer a desert town. It grows and becomes green and lush, and the curse is broken not only um, um, over uh, Green Lake, but in Stanley Ilnats and, and Hector Zeroni's life, and and peace is restored. Um, this is a very interesting book, but it really, like, in terms of analysis, in terms of deeper meaning here, this, the story really, like, fluctuates around, um, fate, some magic, some, 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 I mean, even, even, you can even call it some, like, supernatural or spiritual factors, the way in which that the families are intertwined, the way in which that Hector Zeroni's family and Stanley Ilnatz's family intertwined for decades and, and maybe even centuries even because, I mean, it, it takes several different generations for this curse to be um, lifted. Um, and, and, it, it, and, and the thing is, like, I don't think Stanley Ilnatz you know, it's not until like way into the end he knew that Hector Zeroni was, you know, the family member of Madame Zeroni, and they pretty much fulfilled the deal. Okay, here's what's really interesting is that 
they fulfilled the deal between Stanley's great great grandfather and Madame Zeroni through them, right? So they they're kind of like these these um, placeholders for Madame Zeroni and Stanley Ilnatz's great great grandfather, um, because Stanley, of course, ends up carrying Hector Zeroni to the top of the mountain and singing the lullaby. Like, I mean, everything happens perfectly in order for the curse to be lifted. Um, so that, that's that's a very interesting part of of the book. Um, so I mean, if if you're the type of person who believes in curses, um, I mean, just you know, just by wondering how many people have curses on them, uh, I mean, to break them, it's extremely difficult. It's extremely difficult. Um, it, if it's done the way in which that it's being done within this book. Uh, so that's another fascinating part. The other fascinating part of this book in terms of deeper meaning here is uh, also like how there's so many, many stories and so many life choices being at play um, here. Because there's like every character has this little richness to them. I mean, Stanley has his own backstory. Hector has... Hector Zeroni has the um, his own backstory and the camp counselors and the 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 centuries of family members and and uh, so many things being happened. So like this this book really has this feel of of awe to it because there's so many things that happen by coincidence and 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 fate that if there was no fate or coincidence or or I guess like a spiritual side to this book, a lot of these things wouldn't happen because everything had to happen perfectly for the ending to be presentable or for it all to end up well. Um, so it is, I guess you can also, you can really say this is a Disney story. I mean, this is why, why I think maybe like Disney Channel made the movie out of it. Um, or, or you know, was involved with the, the movie of this because in order for all, all the things to come together in this book to, to have a happy ending, you had to have some type of spiritual part to connect it or to be the glue of, of, of it all coming together. Because, um, I mean, you do have a, a magic part and 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 spiritual part connected to this so it, it, there is a little bit of darkness and fate and and spiritual um jig bob i guess that's the word i'm just gonna throw in there that that makes this all work um so 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 in order for all of this to work in my mind you know you have to have that level of coincidence of perfect coincidence and 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 coming togetherness um, so yeah, you do, you do have to, to think about that. Um, but that, yeah, that's pretty much what happens in the book. That's what it's about. And, and the last thing I'll say about it, it's, it's also, um, huge, like, it also like looks at people's situations growing up and, and what cards you're dealt when you are born. Um, and I mean, how the, how the type of cards you're given at birth can really affect how you end up and how you know where your life goes yeah but that's all i had to say guys um please remember to leave a like subscribe and or comment and i'll see you guys in the next video